Hi folks, this is Jake. Hope you're okay today. It's good to see you. We're looking at uh, scholars and uh, information on the historical Jesus studies. And uh, one of the great scholars from an evangelical perspective is Craig L. Blomberg. Craig Blomberg is widely considered to be one of the country's foremost authorities on the biographies of Jesus, which are called the Four Gospels. He received his doctorate in New Testament from Aberdeen University in Scotland, later serving as a senior research fellow at Tyndale House at Cambridge University in England, where he was part of an elite group of international scholars that produced a series of acclaimed works on Jesus. On Jesus, for the last dozen years, he has been a professor of New Testament at a highly respected Denver Seminary. Blomberg's book includes Jesus and the Gospels, interpreting the parables, how wide is the divide, and the commentaries on the Gospel of Matthew and 1 Corinthians. He has also helped edit volumes uh, 6 of Gospel Perspectives. Um, this information is from the case of the Christ, Lee Strobel. Um, so we'll just listen to a little bit of um, Craig Blomberg. Every book about Jesus, however new or touted or marketed it may be in the popular bookstore, necessarily reflects scholarship at all. And I've given three categories of works that may be well-known or not so well-known in various circles that uh, fall under what I have labeled popular mythology. The first, still sounding very arrogant, I have labeled perspectives unrelated to any real historical evidence. Um, one example of several that I can think of is uh, a professor uh, retired from the Department of Atmospheric Sciences uh, just up the coast, uh, a state from here at uh, Oregon State University, who uh, in his retirement became interested in ufology and became convinced that uh, a German document that he read by a German ufologist uh, was in fact the original Gospel of Matthew. Uh, it looked very much like uh, the Bible's Gospel of Matthew, except at key points where Jesus wound up being an alien from outer space who came to this planet to destroy. So we'll come back to that in a minute, but it, it's important just to recognize that Many people today uh, take in these mod modern scholars and modern writers and many of them are sensationalist writers and you've got to be careful, you've got to make sure that you read reputable scholars who've done the research and are accredited in proper institutions and there's too much popular writing at the moment that people take in and get conspiracy theories about the Gospels. Um, Lee Strobel says, tell me this, I said, with an e e edge of challenge in my voice, is it really possible to be an intelligent, critically thinking person and still believe that the four Gospels were written by the people whose names have been attached to them? Blong Blurks set his cup of coffee on the edge of his desk and looked intently at me. The answer is yes, he said with conviction. He sat back and continued, it's important to acknowledge that, the, strictly speaking, the Gospels are anonymous, but the uniform testimony of the early church was that Matthew also known as Levi, the tax collector and one of the twelve disciples, was the author of the first gospel in New Testament. That John Mark, a companion at Peter, was the author of the gospel we call Mark, and that Luke, known as Paul's beloved physician, wrote both the gospel of Luke and the Acts of the Apostles. How uniform was the belief that they were the authors, I asked. There's, there are no known competitors for these three gospels. He said, apparently I was just not... It was just not in dispute. Even so, I wanted to test the issue further. Excuse my scepticism, I said. But what would anyone have had a motivation to lie by claiming these people wrote these Gospels when they really didn't? Bombo shook his head. Probably not. Remember, these were unlikely characters, he said, a grin breaking on his face. Mark and Luke weren't even among the twelve disciples. Matthew was but uh, a former hated tax collector, he would have been the most infamous character next to Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus. 